So, custom maps inside of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, let me just tell you, there's a lot of stuff you can do with custom maps. You can play a pre-rendered cutscene over the screen. You can play custom background music, whether it's a field theme or a battle theme. You can even spawn enemies from Kingdom Hearts 3 inside of your custom maps. Heartless, nobodies, unverse, bosses, secret bosses, whatever. Now, since there's so many things you can do with custom maps, I'm going to leave some of the more advanced stuff maybe in a part 2, maybe even a part 3. So just, we just stick with the basics for now. Now, before we get started, you're going to want to go to the Epic Game Store, and you're going to want to come to the library and get this Unreal Engine 4.17.2. You can just click this little thing, and you can see it right there. Oh, well, I already have it downloaded, so I don't see it, but you will see it if you don't have it. Also, you're going to want to come down to the description and get this Tress Game thingy. This Tress Game thingy is an Unreal Engine 4 project made by our good friends Joseph and Russell. They were able to replicate a bunch of the... Um, the Kingdom Hearts 3 classes, so that we're able to use a bunch of the nodes from Kingdom Hearts 3 inside of our custom maps. I'll try to go over more of that in part 2, but for now, just get this. So, once you have it, double click that Trust Game.U project, and that'll open up this. Next you're going to want to do is delete this Sky Sphere, and delete this floor, and you can get rid of the Atmospheric Fog if you want. Now, next part is if you are making a custom map, I'm assuming that you already have some kind of map built in Blender or something you downloaded from the internet and you just want to put into Kingdom Hearts 3. Well, regardless of your file type, if it's OBJ, DAE, Kalata, whatever, you're going to want to make sure that it's an FBX file, because if it is not FBX, Unreal Engine 4 just will vomit it up. It won't take it. It only takes FBXs. Another thing you're going to want to look into, if you are planning on this map having materials, is this Caleb Material Instance. And I will leave a link in the description for you to go follow his tutorial. And once you have made this Material Instance, come back to the video. Now, with all that out of the way, we can start adding our map. So go ahead and just drag it in. We got some import options. You're going to want to leave this option, Skeletal Mesh, unchecked. Our map is doesn't have a skeleton. There's no animating limbs or anything like that, like a player character like Sora. So we just want to leave it as a static mesh. That means it's just static, doesn't move. You're also going to want to click this drop down arrow to reveal this combined meshes option. This, what it does is it, if you don't have this on when you import your map, your map is going to get separated into a bunch of tiny pieces. I don't know why, it just happens. And then lastly, you're going to want to take that Caleb material instance that you made with his tutorial, choose it as the base material name, make the base texture property your, your diffuse and go ahead and import it. Cool. So now that's in. We can see our two static meshes that got made. This is the sky and this is just the map itself. And these are all the materials right here. And these are the textures that got applied to the materials. Now, let's drag this in. You can see it's upside down, but that's fine. We can click it. Click over here on this uh, rotate option or press E and just rotate it 180 until it's in the right spot. Oh. Is it in the right spot? Did I rotate it too much? Well, you can also do this to make sure you get it right. All right, that's looking good so far, but it's looking a bit shady. So let's come over to our light source and uncheck cast shadows. Much better. Although it's still kind of dark in some places where the light doesn't reach. So something we can do about that is rotate our light source. So you can see it's affecting more of this side of the map than it is this side. So something we can do about that is come over here to the left and add in a second light. 
or just duplicate this one with control V or control C and control V. So we'll rotate this one around and the other light is handling that side and this is looking good already. Now, before we, um, we spawn in, there's something we're going to want to do to our map. You're going to want to double click over here on the static mesh. Should bring up this. You're going to want to come over here on the right, scroll down to collision and choose use complex collision as simple. You're also going to want to move these two sliders on the bottom all the way to the right. If for some reason you don't see this convex decomposition thing, just come over here to the window, convex decomposition is right there. So once you've done these two things, click apply. What this is doing is it is taking all of the empty space and not applying collision to it. Because what happens sometimes in Unreal Engine 4 is you'll import a map and you'll try to spawn into it, but what will end up happening is it'll be interpreted as like one giant cube of collision. So you'll spawn like way high on top of the map and you can see it below you. What this is doing is it's checking what is empty space, what is not empty space, and applying the collision properly. All right, that's done. Go ahead and click save. Now we can come back here. Now, we're gonna need some more lights because this white isn't cutting it. Let's start with this little fountain over here. This light is usually meant to be green, so let's add in a point light this time. Do what we did before, uncheck cast shadows. And then let's increase the intensity of a bit. Let's also change the color of the light, more greenish. And there we go. That doesn't look that bad. Let's do the same thing for these pumpkins over here. Let's add in another point light. Let's go over here and move it a little bit more inside the pumpkin. And let's make the light orange-ish. And there you go. Instant jack-o'-lantern. Let's do the same thing with this one. Let's just control C, control V this. Let's move it over. <laughs> move it over a little too much. There we go. All right, let's move it in. And that's looking pretty good so far. Now let's do something about these street lamps. So for this, instead of a point light, we're going to be using a spotlight for this. So, same thing as before, let's make this a little orange, so it matches the Kingdom Hearts 1 map a little better. Let's move this up, increase the intensity of it, and you can start to see the effect it's having on the floor. You can also come over here to uh, inner cone angle, if you want that to spread out a bit more. Uh, outer cone angle as well does a similar thing. Let's control C, control V that, because there are two lights here. Mm, oh, that's weird. I don't really... Ah, there we go. They're just overlapping a little bit, but that's fine. All right, our map is looking good. We have some lighting, we have our collision done. Now, let's worry about where our player's starting. So, player start all the way over here. Let's move him to his proper place. Over there. Let's double click him to zoom to him. Let's move him a little closer to the actual Kingdom Hearts 1 spawn. A little to the right. Ah, when you see that bad size thing, that means your player start is colliding with something. Meaning that if you were to try to spawn this, the player might collide with some stuff that it's not meant to. But once it's not colliding with anything, that arrow will go away. All right. And you can see the arrow that it's pointing is the way you'll be facing when you spawn in. Looking good so far. This is going to look a little different in Kingdom Hearts 3. You're not going to see like some of that uh, glossiness. You are going to see some of the white light though, but no, there's ways around that. Cool. So now let's try adding some music. So 
let's make a new folder. Oh, I already made one, I guess. Uh, let's delete that. Start from scratch. Let's call that new folder music. And you're going to want to take your... Um, I usually use WAV files. I don't know if MP3 files work, uh, but you're welcome to try. But WAV has worked for me every single time. So we just drag that in here. Oh, wait. I did that wrong. We need to do this a different way. Uh, Right-click media. File media source. Let's name this um, field theme. Enter, click, and then we're gonna go to file path, and then we're gonna pick our song. Let's go ahead and save that. Then we're going to right click again, media player, choose only audio. Um, let's call this music player. All right. Come in here, choose the field theme that we just made. All right, that's playing. Go ahead and loop it. Close out of that. You're gonna wanna drag this blue player sound into the scene. It doesn't matter where you put it in. Uh, the music will stay the same level no matter where you're at in the scene. Then we're gonna come over here to open level blueprint. We're gonna make a new variable. We're gonna call it uh, music player as well under variable type search for media player object reference compile that make it the music player we've been using all along drag it out and get drag it out again open source and connect it to our event begin play so that this will start as we begin playing choose our field theme and then once you go to compile and save it's going to ask you to save this map so let's name this um i already have a guillotine square map as an example that i put together so let's just name this uh spooky map all right that's compiled and saved let's see what happens when you click play Now, what if we wanted to, say, play a battle theme? Well, we would come back to our map, and when you're starting a battle theme, you need to cross some kind of threshold. You need to, like, overlap into something so that the game knows, okay, the player is in this location, start spawning Heartless, change his command menu, play that battle music, right? So, you would come over here to Trigger, uh, let's just put a box trigger and make sure that's not underground and let's put it directly in front of our player so that it's fast for us to test this all right so once that's in we can come back to our uh, level blueprint and if you right click you can see there's now an add event for trigger box two i think i had a trigger box one or something else i was testing so go ahead and click collision Add on actor begin overlap. This is a new event that'll trigger once something overlaps with this square that we just made, uh, the cube I mean. So what we can do is create another open source. And we're gonna have to come back here and we're gonna have to make another file media source. Let's call this battle theme. Same as before. Choose our music. And now all we have to do is change our source. And right there. So, on begin play, it plays our music like normal. And once we overlap with this uh, cue, you can see the music changes. Alright, enough of that. So, you could mess with that um, in different ways, depending on where you want your enemies to spawn. Uh, you could also set up an event for like, once all enemies in the scene, uh, like the count is zero, then you go back to the field theme 
and then have more trigger boxes or whatever uh, switch between your battle theme. You can get pretty creative with it. Alright, now the last thing I'd like to show you is how you would play a custom cutscene over all of this. So, this is going to take a, quite a few things. Um, you're going to need, first off, let's make another folder for this. Uh, let's call this custom cutscene. Why not? Alright, so you're going to need to make another file media source. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, we make another file media source. Let's call this cutscene. We're going to look for an MP4 this time instead of a music file. We're going to create another media player, but this time we're going to choose both video and audio output sound wave. Let's call this cutscene player. Now you see we get both a video texture and a player sound go in here and we're gonna have to choose our cutscene. That's just a little animation that I've been uh, working on. So let's go back over here. We're also going to need to make a widget. Let's call this cutscene widget. We're gonna come over here to image drag that onto the canvas panel, click the canvas panel, come over here to anchors, make sure it's this one covering the whole screen, then you want to drag this out so that it's covering everything, and then under brush we're going to choose our cutscene player video. Cool. Now we are going to have to um, go back to our blueprint and we're going to create a widget um, I forgot what it's called create widget. yeah yeah no I had it right cutscene widget and then add to viewport and now when we start playing we should see our cutscene oh because I forgot to um I forgot to open source again. We have to make another variable because this is a new media player. Uh, so let's call this cutscene player. It is also a media player. Cutscene player again. Then we want to on begin play open source. Let's bring that over here. Let's choose our cutscene. Now this should play. So you might have noticed that our cutscenes music wasn't actually playing because we're still choosing uh, the field theme for Halloween Town. Um, the way you get around this is you need to play the actual video of the cutscene with one media player and the audio with a different media player. So we can just do this, choose cutscene, and this should work. <laughs> So let's get rid of that. Now I would like to let you know something. Um, there's a few things with sound uh, that Kingdom Hearts 3 just doesn't like. So for example, one of them is if you were trying to play say two songs at the same time or maybe one song and then you wanted to play a sound effect, say with uh, media players. Now. This music player sound that we added in from before, if we tried making another audio media player and we tried dragging both of these into the scene, so like this, we have a cutscene player sound and we have a music player sound. Whichever one was added in last is what will take the priority. So if you tried playing two songs at once, the second song will take priority. And the first song, number three, will act as if it never even played. So you want to keep that in mind. You are limited to one song here. Also, another thing I would like to point out. While we can play music inside of Kingdom Hearts 3, you are not able to um, switch to another map afterwards. You get this one map, and then that's it. 
Because what will happen is, if you try switching to another map, um, the ambient sound uh, component over here, I have found crashes the game. I don't know why. It only does it if you try leaving a map that has an ambient sound. Whether this is playing or not, it just seems to crash it. But there's um, ways to circumvent that. Um, you can do um, what's called a persistent level. Oh, you can actually see it right here, persistent level, uh, spooky map. What we could do is um, we could load other instances, or instances of other maps into this map and then do a lot of faking with like fade outs um, with a widget across the screen of uh, just a black image uh, fading to transparency. Um, you can do, you can use the trigger boxes like I was showing you before. It's for like, if you were coming to this area and you were transitioning into another area, there would be a trigger box like right here. And then that would, um, you could like set the location of the player to the starting point of the second map. And in reality, the second map would be like all the way in the distance. You wouldn't be able to see it on this map. Um, but that's something I'll probably cover in like part two or part three. So let's get rid of this and let's go back to our field theme. Oh, that's the wrong one. Field theme. Let's test this out. Oh, it still has the uh, add to viewport, right? Compile and save. Cool. So now, last thing we're gonna need to do is get this in the Kingdom Hearts 3. So go ahead and file, save all. And then once you have that, you can come down here to cook content for Windows. If you are on Mac or Linux and this doesn't work, I don't know what to tell you. I, I've never owned a Mac in my life. I, and I've never used uh, Unreal Engine 4 on Linux. So, click Content for Windows. You're gonna see that come up. Then you're gonna wanna come over to your trust game from before. And you're gonna wanna find the saved folder, the cooked folder, Windows No Editor, the name of your uh, project, and wait for it to finish cooking. done go into our content folder and then we're going to want to open up a second file explorer and we're going to go to unreal pack make a new folder uh, this is this is in the description as well make a new folder call it whatever you want um, I'm going to call it spooky Inside of that, make another folder called Kingdom Hearts III. And then inside of that folder, make a content folder. And then inside of that folder, I know it's a lot of folderception, but <laughs> don't worry. We're finally at the end. Now, what you did with cooking those contents is you turned all of the files into uassets and UXPs so that they're usable inside of Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, so all we have to do is just take the files that our map needs, so guillotine square and uh, spooky map.exe. Uh, we have to make a maps folder. Spooky map.uxp and u asset. I believe that's everything. Um, if your map ever makes something with this, if it says built data, make sure you delete it. Otherwise your map will crash. Also, make sure you include the Caleb U asset and the Caleb UXP along with your map. And we need our uh, D, oh no, this isn't, is it in our maps folder already? Oh, there we go, I was looking for the music folder. Go ahead and drag that in. So that is everything that we had. Now come all the way back to the Unreal Pack and drag your folder onto Unreal Pack without or with compression, I should say. Okay. 
and then that's going to make this little pack file right here. You're going to cut and bring this over to your, well, you don't even have to cut it. Just drag it into your mods folder. Now all we have to do is open up Kingdom Hearts 3 and see our map. Alright, so to open your map, you're going to need something like CMOD menu. I'll provide a link for that in Nexus. Once you've got it, just open it up, and you're going to see a command line right here. Now, a good, um, you're going to want to see what directory your map file is in. So mine is in slash game slash maps slash spooky map. So that's what we type in. Open slash game slash maps slash spooky map dot map. And we're in. Welcome to Halloween Town. I forgot. One more thing that I forgot to show you guys. Um, since we are able to use the nodes from Kingdom Hearts 3, if you want to be able to turn off the Kingdom Hearts 3's, Kingdom Hearts 3's music so that you're just playing your own, um, on Event Begin Play, just do this. Suspend BGM. Compile save. Save all, just in case. Cook contents for Windows. Oops, that is the wrong folder. There we go. Wait for that to finish packing. Maps. Spooky map. Um, whenever you're making a change to level blueprint, all you need to do is just replace the um, the uh, the U map. That's it. So let's cut. Go to our spooky. Go into maps. Replace these. Drag it one more time. Replace that mod pack. Now we should be good to go. All right. So open slash game slash maps slash spooky map dot map. And now you'll see, the Kingdom Hearts 3 music faded out, and all we hear is our own music now. Also, all of the collisions seem to be working. Sora will grab onto ledges automatically, it's just built into him. And you can see some of that lighting is carrying over. Uh, we could rotate it a bit inside of Unreal Engine 4 if we wanted to make it a little bit prettier. But that is part one of adding custom maps to Kingdom Hearts 3. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And if you feel like um, if there's anything you want to know how to do in custom maps, also leave a comment. And I'll try to see if it's possible. I'll let you know if it's possible and try to include it in one of the next parts. Alright? It's almost 3 a.m. for me, so I'm going to sleep. Good night.